and Idowu. At the center circle to jump it up. A frigid night in Dallas, Texas. And we got some hoops on ESPN+. Plus. And it's SMU with the opening possession of the basketball game and Kendrick Davis to key the offense. Mike, it's going to be really important how Tulsa starts his basketball game. You look at the last two games versus Central Florida and South Florida. Both of those games, Tulsa started one for seven and one for nine. You can't do that against a very good Mustang basketball team. Weathers with the 18-footer and SMU with a 2-0 start. And that's really one of the benefits of the Mustangs is the fact that they have so many players that can manufacture points. You saw Marcus Weathers there with a nice pull-up in the mid-range. Horn over the right shoulder, no good. Idowu goes up for the rebound, can't grab it. Weathers box him out, and here comes Davis. Nice weak side double team by the Mustangs. Aaron pass looking for Vandemel on the baseline. Too tall and out of bounds, and SMU with an early turnover. And, and that's really what you have to be cognizant of if you're the Golding Hurricanes. You've got to get back in defensive transition. You don't want to get the Mustangs easy looks in transition. Richard, the freshman. Now up top for Idowu. Looking for Horn, nice pocket pass. 14 footers a bit long. Mustangs are able to switch defensively out in the perimeter because of the way they play in this small ball lineup. Fortunate that Tulsa missed that wide open look on the interior. Marcus Weathers going to work again on the baseline. Same shot, opposite side. 4 nothing SMU and all thanks to Marcus Weathers. And, and that's a big matchup tonight for Tulsa and the Mustangs. Ray Idowu really doesn't have the speed or quickness to stay with Marcus Weathers. They're going to have to figure something out as far as Marcus Weathers is concerned. Nice move by Pritchard down the lane to get Tulsa on the board. And, and Anthony Pritchard, that's a player they really need to play well. He's a freshman guard, and he's going against arguably one of the best point guards in the country. So he needs to not get those big eyes and keep himself in the moment. Andrew Davis cross court for Bandamel. Pump fake. He'll fire a three. Back iron. Marcus Weathers offensive board. Nice pass. Finds the cutting nut all. He tried to find Bandamel and just off target out of bounds. When the Mustangs move the basketball and when it doesn't stick like it has in the early goings, they're almost impossible to defend. I love the fact that the ball is going side to side. It's hitting multiple players and they're sharing the basketball early. Griffin, the second leading scorer for Tulsa. I'm talking with Frank Hayes earlier this week, he talked about how important it was for both Griffin and Horn to get cooking in the same game. No dice there for Griffin back here. The way comes SMU, but they've both been so, so impactful for this team. They didn't even both be impactful in the same game. Weathers with all seven to start it off for SMU as he bangs the triple. And that's where it's dangerous with Marcus Weathers because he has the ability to score on all three levels. Not as good from the three, but he is a capable three-point shooter. And if you don't close out like on that last offensive possession, Marcus Weathers will knock it down all game long. Lane goes to freshman block from behind by Marcus Weathers. A very impactful opening a couple minutes here for the senior transfer. He'll get it in transition. Corner, not all. Good ball movement. Sticks now with Davis with 18 on the ticker. Fires over top. Misses short. I kind of wish Kendrick Davis would have kept the ball moving. The nice little bounce pass. But when you got the potential American Athletic Conference Player of the Year, you, you give him a little more leeway than most players. That's right. Good hands there by Nuttall in the passing lane, but Tulsa able to keep it now nearly to throw away. Pritchard corrals at midcourt. Horn with seven seconds on the play clock. Has to spin away, and Bandamel with the steal. Pritchard able to get back and at least make a play on the basketball. It'll be a foul on the floor. And that's one of the things that Coach Hay preached to us this morning is the fact that for Tulsa, they absolutely cannot have live ball turnovers because that is what the Mustangs thrive on. They're so quick, they're so athletic and long that when they get in transition, normally they will hurt you. Haith, the eighth year head coach for the Tulsa Golden Hurricane. Previously at Mizzou and Miami. Brandon Mellon, another pump fake. This time into the lane. Draws the foul. Mustangs are, are getting away with the long cross-court pass. They've made that multiple times. Tulsa needs to recognize that and kind of bite on that and, and 
creep into the gaps and try to steal one of those passes. Bandamel sinks the free throw. SMU with an 8-2 to two start here on their home floor on what is it? An interesting night from a uh, attendance perspective because of the, the weather here in the Dallas area has been rather nasty and it's getting worse as the day progresses. So not a lot of fans able to make it out tonight as compared to what they're used to here at Moody Coliseum. But uh, those that are here doing a nice job to make a little bit of noise in the early going. Yeah, I'm impressed that they filled it up the last 10 minutes before the, the game started as we see SMU and a little bit of escort pressure. And you'll see them do that from time to time, not necessarily looking for the steal, but just trying to shorten that shot clock and make it more difficult for the Golden Hurricanes to get any offensive continuity. Griffin with the step back, misses side iron. Bandamel fights for the rebound up ahead for Davis. And, and, and Mike, I, I mentioned the offensive row, woes to start for Tulsa, and this is happening in this game as well. One for six to start, similar to what happened against UCF and USF. Another game ball turnover there here for Tulsa as SMU takes it away again. Weathers looking for his twin brother. And Mustangs offensive rebound. The matchup zone for Tulsa is effective, but it leaves offensive rebounding open and ball movement. As we've seen today, when the Mustangs move the basketball, they are almost impossible to defend. As you mentioned, we've seen turnovers already rear their head in the early going for Tulsa. And SMU has scored two points off of the, that early two turnovers by Tulsa, and you just can't have that on the road. Travel on the baseline by Jackson. Jackson had a very nice performance a couple games ago in the win over Cincinnati for Tulsa. Their best win so far this year. He had a career high with points in 21 in that game. Yeah, he's had double figures three of the last four games, and they need him to play confidently in order for them to win in conference play. Turnovers a factor for both teams here in the early going as, T as uh, SMU has thrown the ball away a handful of times. Down low for Idowu. He's got moves over either shoulder. Nearly threw it away as Bandamel got a hand on it, but it will stay on this end. And that's why you have to be decisive with your pass passes when you play against the Mustangs. They are so athletic, and players like Emmanuel Bandamel are so long and quick and jump the gaps. Sometimes you need a ball fake in order to shift the defense. Sam Griffin connects on the three, and Tulsa inches a bit closer here in the early going, 9-5. Matchup zone. Difficult for SMU to deal with. Ball knocked out of bounds. Last touch by Davis, and it goes down as another turnover for the Mustangs. Little too much dribbling on that possession by Kendrick Davis. Again, there's a lot of offensive weapons. You have to trust your teammates, move the ball from side to side, allow your offense to do the work for you, particularly early in the basketball game when you're trying to get some continuity with your offense. Take a look at Tulsa's losses this year by five points or less, nine of them on the year as the three from Pritchard misses long. This is a team that's been right there, Stephen, in a number of games against good basketball. Two-point game against Houston, three-point game twice against Memphis. They've had opportunities, they just haven't been able to finish games. Yeah, and talking to Coach Hayes before the game, he likes where the team is at right now. They're getting the matchup zone finally, and when you have seven new players, it takes a little while to acclimate to a new system. Turnovers exchanged there, and it ends with a Michael Weathers layup and a six-point SMU lead. Again, live ball turnovers. You're going to see it time and time again in this game. When the Mustangs get it, they are off to the races, and normally they are going to score in those type of situations. Richard down the lane, tried to put it up with a soft touch off the right side of the rim, and back the other way comes Davis. Make or misses, the Mustangs are trying to get up and down the court. And with Davis misses short, offensive board, Michael Weathers. You've got to put a body on players, particularly Michael Weathers, that is so active throughout the game. Another chance at an offensive rebound there for Zurich Phelps, the youngster at Duncanville High School right here in the Dallas area. But he couldn't quite squeeze it, and it goes back to Tulsa. Frank Haith wants his team to calm down. You see him motioning to Jariah Horn wanting to get something. And this is when you have to have a veteran to create something, manufacture a point for your team to settle this young team down. Konstantinovsky up top, Horn for three. That gets the bottom. 
and just like the coach scripted he made eye contact with his veteran senior and this is the guy that has to get it done for the Golden Hur Hurricanes Jariah Horn leading the team in points and rebounding he is the confidence maker for Tulsa quite an odyssey through his college basketball career started in Nebraska played three years here at Tulsa then transferred to Colorado then came back to Tulsa for just this year to finish up his collegiate career with his COVID year and he's been an impactful player for them leading them in points and rebounds this season Konstantinovsky with the 14 footer and cuts the lead to one and that's something that Tulsa hasn't had throughout the year is good and consistent bench production. So anything that they can get from guys off the bench is going to be a bonus to take some of that pressure off Sam Griffin and Jariah Horn offensively. Franklin Agunani just into the ball game and he finds a deuce. Yeah, Agunani had some good minutes against Memphis. 19 minutes, 8.7 rebounds, and that was after really not playing a lot in multiple games. So it's good to get someone who is ready off the bench to come in and make some contributions. He chases it down in the corner. He's fighting there with Konstantin Austin. Now up ahead for Zert. Phelps in transition. Up and under. And fit. Nikita Konstantinovsky actually screened his own man. Mustangs missed an easy bunny there in transition. And Tulsa made them pay, tying it up at 13. The Davius Drain with the triple. 1,000-plus point score at Southern Miss, a kid that they needed to kind of find some more offense. Perhaps a good sign for Tulsa, him hitting the three there. Now another turnover for SMU. Here comes Curtis Haywood in transition. Horn leaves it for Haywood. Now back to Horn, he'll pop for another three. And hits, and Tulsa leads after falling in the early 9-2 to hole. Right back they've come. And talking to the coaching staff at SMU, this is a game that they were concerned about because the first game against Tulsa at Tulsa was close. And the way that the Golden Hurricanes play allows them to stay in basketball games. And you're seeing a lack of defensive intensity by the Mustangs early on in this game, allowing Tulsa to get back into it. The bucket there from Davis ends the spurt for Tulsa. But it was a 14 to 4 breaker, a pretty easy tiebreaker to make with the uh, head to head. But at least as of right now, SMU still out. Yeah, you got to look at the, the quadrant wins. Um, and Memphis had been playing well. And it also, you have to look into players that they have, injuries that they have. You know, they're out, they're without Imani Bates. But really, SMU can only control what they control. And that's how they're playing. And this is a game that they cannot afford to lose here at home against Tulsa. And they continue to turn the to, to uh, turn the basketball over, and, and that that's now you, eight in the early going. And that's what you get concerned with as a coach and as a player is playing down to your competition. And after a big emotional win like they had against Memphis, not being ready intensity wise and mentality wise to go against the next opponent. Davis had it partially blocked, and here comes Griffin, who had a chance to step into a wide open three pointer, missed back iron, and this time sets up Drain for three. And here comes Davis. One thing you don't want to give a team like Tulsa is confidence. They just got their first road win in conference play last game against South Florida. And so there's a team coming in to the Hilltop with confidence. And the more they're allowed to play with SMU, the more they feel like they'll be able to win this game. And talking with Tim Jankovic yesterday, he said, you know, they're, they're such a scary team because of how much talent they have. He said, you just hope you're not the team that they break out against. Big bucket there from Stefan, uh, Stefan Todorovic to answer back and put SMU up too. Horn in the lane looking for a doe tipped away. Good hands from Tristan Clark in transition. Up ahead for Zurich Phelps and he lays it in. And, 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 and again, live ball turnovers are just long runouts as you had on that last possession with a nice tip by Tristan Clark timing that lob perfectly to tip it to Kendrick Davis who gets it out in transition and knows what to do with it out in the open court. And the other thing that factors into that with these live ball turnovers, it's really hard to set up a matchup zone when you've got to do it in transition. Coming off a made basket, it's so much easier to get into their set. Absolutely, but one thing about Tulsa is they do mix it up between the matchup zone and man-to-man, -man. but yeah, you, you cannot set up your defense if you're missing buckets. 7-0 SMU run. Answering the 14-4 Tulsa spurt that put them in front for the first time tonight. Weathers looking to extend it, make it a 10-0 run. 
Marcus Weathers really getting comfortable from distance. Had only made 16 threes prior to this game. Now with two in this game, they're going to need to run him off the line and force him to put it on the bounce and be a facilitator. Weathers with 10 in the first dozen minutes of the basketball game. Green misses short. Davis penetrating. This is where there's too much dribbling with Kendrick Davis. You gotta let go of the ball, particularly when you're, you're double team. Win. Uh, but again, you gotta take care of business here tonight against Tulsa before you can think about Houston. Tulsa, you saw second to last in the conference standings at 3 and 11 on the year, and you can't help but think that so many of those losses by five points or less flip a couple of those, and they might be right in the middle of the pack in the AAC. Good job by the Mustangs with converging defensively on the ball handler, forcing contested jumpers on the interior. Tough shot, misses short, and SMU with a chance to extend this 10 0 run. Marcus Weathers already with 10 on the night. Had to throw up a desperation pass to his twin brother Michael, who will reset the offense with 10 on the shot clock and an offensive foul and a moving screen. Tristan Clark, the senior out of San Antonio, whistled for the foul. And again, whenever the Mustangs get into situations where the ball sticks and they do too much dribbling, like on that last possession with Michael Weathers, you force long, protracted screens, and offense get into situations where there's no continuity and you turn it over like they did. So you had a chance to turn it over once again. Somehow squirts back to Tulsa, wing three. This is just a bit long off the hands of Tim Dalton. To Dorovich for three. Offensive board, Marcus Weathers kick out. Three from his twin brother, rattles out. Mustangs doing a good job of attacking the offensive glass and getting those second chance scoring opportunities. The put back dunk for Nikita Konstantinovsky ends the 10 0 SMU run. in the corner. And the Weathers into the lane, kick out for Marcus with 10 on the tipper. Double team comes, kick out to Dorovich for three. This is short. Rebound tipped, but corralled by Pritchard. Nice look by Jackson, the block from behind by Michael Weathers. Up ahead for Phelps. Misses the dunk. Came up, hobbled, he's down on the far baseline. Tulsa misses the bucket and they'll saying a word or two as he made his way off the floor. But uh, Zurich Phelps. Certainly again, you, you just have to hope that it's not as serious as it appears to be based on what we've seen here in the last couple of minutes. Tulsa in there diamond in one press. Way back into their man-to-man, -man, really just trying to mess with the offensive chemistry of the Mustang. In the corner, Nuttall for three, and he buries it. And that's big for the Mustangs because Zach Nuttall, who's really their designated three-point shooter, 0 for 9 last game, 0 for 8 from three the last two games. So getting him on track is going to be huge for the Mustangs, particularly when they get into American Athletic Conference play. 33% three-point shooter on the year, but those numbers dinged substantially by the, the cold streak you're talking about. A good sign for SMU to see number 10 bang a triple. Baseline drive, corner for Horn for three. This is long. Rebound tipped and grabbed by Michael Weathers. Weathers into the lane and finishes. Michael Weathers is so athletic and so quick, and he does so many different things for the Mustangs, whether it's blocking shots, assist, facilitating. He's another dynamic playmaker that when Kendrick Davis goes onto the bench, he can control and run the offense. And it's always good for the Mustangs when he starts out early, scores, and then others that are around that eight point scoring margin and a really non productive bench when you're going against a high powered offensive. Juggernaut like the Mustangs you can't afford particularly on the road to get into those offensive droughts that have happened in this first half 
That's something in talking with Frank Hayford earlier this week. He mentioned, you know, that he's tried to kind of mix up the roster a little bit, mix up the lineup a little bit, sometimes have uh, Pritchard come off the bench and see if that would spark some bench scoring, and that didn't really work either. So it's just it, it's been a battle for them to try and find points. Yeah, and he tried Sam Griffin off the bench, but at the end of the day, he just needs to put his best five on the court and just try to tinker with the bench guys and get them to be more productive as we see Tulsa in that matchup zone. Again, trying to disrupt the offensive continuity of the Mustangs. Vandemel in the corner with 10 on the ticker. Good ball movement. Michael Weathers for three. Misses short. Good offense, good defense. Really important, though, for the Golden Hurricanes to get that defensive rebound to start their offensive break. Haywood with it. Gives it down low for Horn. Pump fake. And the 18 footer rattles home. Jariah Horn had the little mouse in the house. Got Zach not out to bite on the pump fake. Create a little bit of contact, but really you should, you should see a steady diet of Jariah Horn for these last three minutes of the first half. Bandamel. Cross court for Davis. Marcus Weathers with five on the... Shot clock, Michael Weathers, cross court for Bandamel for three, back iron. Rebound knocked out of bounds by Weathers, and it's Tulsa basketball. Weathers came up kind of grabbing at his face. I think he took an errant arm or elbow. So SMU had their run. To build the lead back up, can Tulsa respond here in the final two minutes and change? Drain in the corner for Haywood. Now Idowu. Seven on the shot clock, cross court. Horn, pump fake, open three. Bottoms again for Jariah Horn, and he's into double figures. Look, you got to read your scouting report and you got to pay attention in game to make those adjustments. Jariah Horn, two consecutive possessions. Nice pump fake to get into a shot. Yeah, you want to run him off the line, but you have to close out in control because good players like Horn will attack that poor closeout as he's done in these last two possessions. Nice feed from twin to twin, weathers to weathers, and Michael finishes it in the lane. Yeah, when the Mustangs are patient offensively and the ball doesn't stick and they go side to side and hit their counters, so difficult to defend against. Back to Jariah Horn, and he goes to work in the corner. Three-pointer on the way for Darian Jackson. So Tulsa with a mini spurt here to cut the lead back down to three. This is a nice momentum boost for the Golden Hurricanes going into halftime if they can continue with this run, knocking this lead down and being within a possession. Nice move to open himself up and the three misses long there for Kendrick Davis. Kendrick Davis playing a little hero ball there, not trusting in his teammates, moving from side to side. That's the only time when the Mustangs get into trouble is the time when they're not patient and they don't trust their offense. Oh, lane, lots of contact, no whistle. Now one afterward, and the foul will go against Haywood. Ryan Horn making a big impact here for Tulsa. As I mentioned, you got to study the player and pay attention to their tendencies. Jariah Horn with a nice pump fake on the post. And then again, from the three-point line, attacked the poor closeout. Random tried to run him off the line. You pumped it. Pump fake. Took an unmolested three-point shot. Now Weathers down the side of the lane. Goes glass. Bit too strong. And Tulsa can hold for the final shot. Possession. If Jariah Horn gets it either in the perimeter or in the post, you need to run that double team and force somebody else to attempt to shoot because nobody is shooting positively as far as manufacturing points other than Jariah Horn. Yes, and you run in the trap at him trying to disrupt the set. It's worked rather well now, already down to nine seconds to work with here for Tulsa. Griffin trying to work off a screen from Idowu. Gives for Jackson for three at the horn. They only make 6.4 in conference play. And so if you're the Mustangs, you do not want them to get any more comfortable from distance because as we all know, that is the difference maker and the great equalizer in college basketball, the three-point line. You've seen Jariah Horn knock down a few already in the first half. 
gives it up top here for Pritchard, who can't finish. Beg your pardon, Griffin can't finish on the runner. And back comes SMU with their first possession of the second half. Nuttall will try a three, and he knocks it down. SMU's fifth triple of the basketball game, and they doubled their lead early on. Zach Nuttall, two for two from distance in this game. He's due for a big game. It's nice to see him shoot confidently and knock it down from the perimeter, and that is something that is a, a good omen for the Mustangs. Right back comes Jariah Horn, though, with a three of his own. And again, if you're back down to three. If, if, if I'm the Mustangs, I'm trying to figure out someone else other than Jariah Horn to carry this basketball team because nobody else has had any sort of comfort level offensively other than Jariah Horn. He's got 14 of their 30 points, now four for five from three-point range in this basketball game. Tulsa finished the first half on a 9-2 run. Bandemel misses Law. And the Golden Hurricane trying to find some continuity and, and a way to continue that run to kind of stretch that run into the second half and maybe edge back in front again. Richard got hung up in the lane, back up top for Horn. It's a contact, no whistle. Now down low for Idowu, over his left shoulder, and finishes. And that's where the Mustangs really miss their space eater and Isaiah J.C., who was somewhat of a rim protector, but ate up so much space for the Mustangs. And you just saw on the interior on that last possession, Idowu just bully his way to the rim. J.C. tore his Achilles against USF earlier this season. Done for the year. Nice. Michael Weathers, nice move in the lane, but Horn with the recovery gets the block, and now a foul on the loose ball is going to go against. It'll go against Michael Weathers. A little bit of a frustration foul there after he had the shot blocked. Yeah, nice initial move though by Michael Weathers attacking the rim, and then you see Jariah Horn not give up on the basketball play, just able to get some fingers on that basketball to knock it out. Good job by Tulsa protecting the rim. Sam Griffin might have got away with a little bit of contact down on the interior. Griffin tried to throw it along the baseline, has it stolen away, and here comes Nuttall in transition. Corner three on the way for Michael Weathers. This is long. We talked about it off the top of the broadcast. This Tulsa team has played with a lot of really good teams in this conference, including the first meeting between these two teams, only a five-point game. Played Houston to a two-point game. They've got the talent to play with these teams. They just haven't finished games. This one on the way there misses short. Nice rebound by Marcus Weathers, who, by the way, the first Mustang with a double-double at halftime. He had 10 and 10 since 2015. Bandemel answers with the three. Sam Griffin, who missed the last shot from the three-point line, is a player for Tulsa that needs to get going in the second half. One for eight, one for five from the three-point line. Only three points as the other player that averages over 15 points per game for Tulsa. And with only three points in the first half, the fact that they're only down four is beneficial for Tulsa, but they need him to manufacture points. Feels almost miraculous that they're only down four. Yeah. With, with as important as Griffin is to what they do for him to produce that little. Kind of surprising that they're in this close a basketball game. And, and he's gotten a lot of looks to the basket, just not able to knock it down, but you got to credit the length and athleticism of Emmanuel Vanderbilt contesting all of his shots. Doe with the offensive rebound, but stepped on the baseline. Griffin tried to get on track there, but it rattled out on him. And back to SMU it goes. One thing that SMU does have are four perimeter players that are very good all ball on ball defenders with Kendrick Davis, Michael Weathers, Zach Nuttall, and Emmanuel Vandermill. And so having that ability of really showstoppers defensively is beneficial to your team on the defensive side of the court. 36-32 Mustangs approaching the under-16 timeout here. A little bit of a herky-jerky start to this second half, and Weathers misses long there. Long rebound pulled down by Horn. And he would have had one win for other teams. That's right. And so they have the bullseye on their back, but it's very essential for them to win out at home if they want to continue to improve their tournament resume. 
That Loyola Marymount loss is their only quad four loss. And that does ding them a little bit, and perhaps part of why Lenardi still has them just on the outside looking in for the field of 68. Yeah, that's one of those losses that is the gift that keeps on giving in the wrong direction. Loyola Marymount did not have the type of season that you would want to have for a loss. Bandamel hits another triple. SMU extends the lead out to seven. Their largest lead today was 10 at 28 to 18 there with a few minutes left in the first half. Whistle on the shot. And Jackson will head to the free throw line. We have not seen a whole bunch of trips to the free throw line today. It's been a very clean basketball game. Two free throws for both teams in the first half. But going back to that last possession, Emmanuel Bandemil has improved his three-point shooting percentage from last year. This is the best shooting he's had throughout his whole. And part of the fact is because he waits and shoots in rhythm and doesn't rush his shot. And in previous years, he kind of hunted for his offense a little bit more. And, and this year, more trust with his teammates. And that's resulted in better shooting percentage, both from the field and from the three-point line. 38% three-point shooter. Second free throw, no dice, and it'll stay a six-point game here in favor of SMU. In transition, Weathers to Nuttall on the end line, and he stepped on the sideline. SMU's been better with the turnovers here in the second half, but that was a big struggle for them in the opening 20 minutes. Yeah, and with nine turnovers in the first half, that's not a... And, and that's honestly something that I, I feel like helped Tulsa to stay in the game in that first half. And with 11 now, with 15 minutes left to go in the second half, that's something that they need to shore up. Because the only thing you're doing with that is giving Tulsa more opportunities. Speaking of, Tulsa responding in kind, throwing it away. Beyond the grasp of Jariah Horn, it will be Mustang's ball on the baseline. Yeah, offensively for Tulsa, Every offensive trip down the court, you have to get at least a shot attempt. And having those empty possessions like they just had is just not something that's going to be a recipe for a win on the road, particularly when you have a good team like the Mustangs. We heard Frank Haith say it a couple of times in our conversation with him, those live ball turnovers. You've referenced it already tonight. Another one right there. It, it seemed like after the opening stretch where they were committing several, they did kind of rein it back in. They've played a, a more composed brand of basketball since then. But a bad time for one there, down six. Ball's been in Hendrick Davis' hands for he got 10 bailed out right there. Absolutely late got in the out. shot clock. Really poor offensive possession for the Mustangs. The Tulsa threw out a different defensive look, a little trap out on the perimeter, and SMU didn't do a good job recognize that and making something out of it. And here we have who I believe are the contenders for the American Athletic Conference Player of the Year. And I think there's a runaway winner in Kendrick Davis. Nobody else is playing better. Mustangs were picked third, now they're second. Jalen Duran was the preseason player of the year, but selection, but Memphis struggled obviously Kyler Ed Edwards wasn't their pick Sasser was but with with him being out yeah. he's picked up admirably and he's the only other player that I would think would be in contention with that you got to credit coach Kelvin Sampson the way that they played losing their leading score but yeah Kendrick Davis absolutely has played amazingly this year and is arguably one of the top five point guards in the country Tyler Edwards, the transfer from Texas Tech, was part of that Red Raiders team that made the run to the Final Four a couple years ago. Has been a key piece for Houston for sure this season. The Kendrick Davis' season stacks up very favorably about against really any other player in the American. And really what's been impressive to me is you look at his production from the three-point line. When he makes six more threes, he will have doubled his three-point production from last year, and that's just made him so much more of a complete player because you can't take away any part of his game. He cannot be the place to be in Houston. It was two weeks ago tonight right here at Moody Coliseum that SMU came back from 15 down to knock off a Houston team that had not lost in conference play yet on the year. 85-83, the final in that one. Tonight with an 11-point lead on Tulsa, but trying to 
fight back a little bit is Sam Griffin, who continues to struggle here from the field. Yeah, Can't get the short one to go. Yeah, Tulsa needs to find an answer offensively, and Sam Griffin needs to find a way to contribute or facilitate somehow in this second half as you see Kendrick Davis again being that point guard and the quarterback for the Mustangs. Horn way out. Misses Sinai. Kendrick Davis now with six on the night. Here comes Bandemel in transition to Dorovich for three. You talk about staying ready. Stefan Todorovic has been getting sparse minutes of late, but he's a shooter. And when he comes in, that's what he does, and he's knocking down threes, and that's the way to earn more minutes and trust from your coach going two for four from downtown in this game. Nice production for the freshman. Leads the Mustangs with a 44% clip from distance, does Todorovic. And a big one there to extend the lead to 16. Now Horn trying to do everything he can to keep Tulsa in this basketball game. Well, Mike, you noticed the last three from Horn, how far out in the perimeter he was pushed out in that last turnaround jump shot. Marcus Weathers closed out nicely on him. Stefan Todorovic is having fun out there right now. Sticks the tongue out on the three-pointer, and SMU builds the lead to 19. The crowd that made their way out late on a very cold night here in Dallas getting rewarded with this performance by the Mustangs. Well, that's when offense is fun, when you, you move the ball and you hit the open player, and more importantly, you hit the hot player, which is clearly Stefan Todorovic. Now Kendrick Davis with the steal. He'll pop from distance. Sinai. SMU on a 19-3 run. Pritchard finally ends that, just his second made field goal of the night. Now two for 11. Good job, Sam Griffin, who thus far earlier in this game pretty much has been shooting like a stormtrooper. Good job of him finally knocking it down and playing within himself because they need him to manufacture points in this game. Kendrick Davis answers back. He's finally started to heat up a little bit. He's now got eight on the night. It was a slow start for him as well. Three for eight from the field now for the AAC Player of the Year candidate. Davius Drain, baseline, cross court. Three-pointer misses short from Griffin. Dorovich up top for Bandamel for three. Yet again. SMU cooking from distance, and the lead is 22. Todorovic wanted to shoot that so badly. Great maturation by him, though, keeping it moving, hitting the open player in Emmanuel Bandemil, who himself is having a nice game from distance, going four for nine with 14 points for the Mustangs. Now a 24 to five run for SMU. For 25 from the three point line. And I talked about knowing your personnel. SMU best in the American Athletic Conference, making 8.8 threes per game, 40 or 57th rather in the country. And you cannot allow a team with this much offensive firepower to knock down threes with the ease that the Mustangs have in this game. Richard couldn't connect and now Weathers to Weathers. Back up top for Marcus. Not all in the corner. Midway through the shot clock. Nice deep for Todorovic down the lane in the corner for Nuttall for three. That was a textbook display of ball movement, sharing the basketball that I've seen throughout this game. Not able to knock it down, but again, you love the way that the Mustangs are playing selfless basketball down the stretch. And honestly, Mike, that's why they have the lead, because they're sharing the basketball. Oh. I mean, it helps a good offense. Let's not doubt that. But the fact that they sure. move the basketball and share it and hit the open man and hit the hot guy, it's difficult to defend, particularly when you got a good offensive team like that. And Tim Jacobs told us earlier this week, when you're playing a matchup zone like Tulsa plays, you've got to move the ball, but you can't just move the ball to move the ball. You've got to move the ball with purpose. You've got to move the ball strategically. And they've done that so well, and it's created so many opportunities for them for open looks, and that's why they started the second half. Seven for 10 from three-point range. Absolutely. You run your offense to score. You don't just run it. Tristan Clark met him at the apex. The crowd here at Moody thought it may have been clean. See, good job by the Mustangs converging on the ball handler, Curtis Hayward, the second. Looked like Tristan Clark got his hands on it. 
Yeah, but we'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe one where he got to clean up top, but got him with the body down below. Sure, sure. We'll, we'll, we'll work with that. Yeah. Haywood makes the first free throw. Drops the second as well. Lead down to 20 with 9.04 to play. Down to 20? Technically, it was 22 a moment ago. <laughs> like, that's just not the number you want to hear. Steal here for the freshman. Pritchard lays it in and the foul. Uh, I really like the fight, though, from Tulsa. They're not giving up. Yeah, they're down 20. But, hey, if you want to come back, you're going to have to fight. Nice trap up at the three-point line. Michael Weathers was in that no-man's land right where that three the half court line was that third defender. And Pritchard did a good job getting his hands on the basketball and taking it coast to coast now for the N1 scoring opportunity. So five quick ones there for Tulsa. Lead down now to 17. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Kendrick Davis returns to the floor. Yeah, all Coach Jankovic needed to see is a couple poor offensive possessions before he got his All-American quarterback back in. As you see Tulsa back into their pressure three-quarter court zone, again, trying to disrupt the offensive continuity of the Mustangs. It's interesting with, with a player like Davis battling the ankle that he was dealing with, missed the Temple game, the one game that SMU has lost of late, came back and played, obviously, very well against Memphis at 27 in that game. But if you're Tim Jankovic and you see that your team's up 17, was up 22 a moment ago, do you try to be somewhat strategic with that, knowing that you've got Houston on Sunday to try and, where, where possible, be prudent with, hey, let's, let's let him not play 34 minutes tonight? You absolutely do have that in the back of your mind. With the recognition, though, that this is a Tulsa basketball team that can manufacture points quickly, and eight minutes is an eternity of time. So, yeah, I think they'll be judicious with Kendrick Davis's minutes, but you're going to wait until maybe the four-minute mark, the three-minute yeah. mark before you start bringing in the rotational ancillary players. Jariah Horn answering back Marcus Weathers' top oh. button. Now Michael Weathers gets undercut, landed hard. Quickly back on his feet, though, and he'll head to the free throw line with 8.01 to play here, half number two. Good interior passing by the Mustangs. You see Marcus Weather, Weathers with the basketball. Michael Weathers cuts instinctively. And once the defensive converges, nice little shovel pass to his twin brother who initiated that contact. SMU pretty balanced with their scoring tonight. 14 for Bandamel with the four three-pointers. Marcus Weathers just got his first point to the second half, so now he's got a dozen. But eight for Kendrick Davis. Seven could be eight here in a moment for Michael Weathers. Six for Nuttall. Nine more for Stefan Todorovic. They have spread the wealth around here and lead it by 17. Make it 18 with eight minutes to play. One thing that's a nice indicator for the Mustangs is the fact that they have 16 assists on 22 made field goal goals. As I mentioned earlier, sharing that basketball, their assist rate for the season is at 55%, which is top 87 in the country. So consistently, they have been a team. Over, obviously, for Larry Brown midway through that 15-16 season and has continued the success that they started while he was an assistant. Yeah, Larry Brown, the Hall of Famer, and Coach Tim Jankovic has done a, a, an exceptional job of putting his imprint on the Mustangs once he was at the helm and carried that to create his own culture. And I think this team is an example of that. Again, able to play with small ball, able to overcome adversity, and pretty much all of his teams have had that adversity and have played through it. But I know they are ready to get to the tournament and to see what they can do in that sort of atmosphere. Michael Weathers skying for the block, starting the transition, and Davis draws the foul. It'll be on the floor. Davis scored a moment ago to reestablish a 20-point lead here for SMU. He's now got 10 on the night. Get another look at Michael Weathers getting up high. Yeah, one thing you got to always be cognizant of whenever Michael Weathers is on your back shoulder is he will contest the shot 
and he will come up with blocks averaging 1.3 per game seventh in the American Athletic Conference Horn with the strip takes it away there from Marcus Weathers Mustangs have done a good job in the second half kind of hindering Jariah Horn offensively right on cue though what a move from Horn bucket and the foul he did have a tremendous first half. He now has 19 on the night on 7 of 13 shooting. I, the I unfortunate love his reality pace. for Telsa is it's just been him tonight. Right. I love his pace. Had Marcus Weathers on his body, initiated that contact, protected the basketball, used the glass, threw it up for the and one opportunity. And this is a guy in Jariah Horn, a grad transfer who understands the moment embraces the moment understands the futility of this last collegiate season that he has and you can tell he's trying to get every moment out of it now with 20 on the night but nobody else in on the Tulsa roster in double figures in fact nobody for Tulsa has more than five points tonight Pritchard and Griffin both have five the second leading scorer is behind Jariah Horns 20 Weathers loses out of bounds last touched by Haywood Marcus Weathers realizing the mismatch has about 45 pounds on Curtis Hayward the second Hayward did a good job of getting the basket out of Marcus Weathers hands Bart Lennox and his crew talking with Weathers and a couple players there from Tulsa for a moment well if, if you're Tulsa you know, John back and forth with the Mustangs it isn't something that I think you want to do. That's what Memphis tried to do last game before the game started, and you saw how that ended. Nice look on the back door there for Michael Weathers and a pretty finish. Tulsa is not going to be able to get back into this basketball game trading buckets. You got to make some defensive stops and, and try to get something easy in transition. Loose ball on the floor. Good effort from the freshman Pritchard to get on the deck. Up and under, and the layup goes for Sterling Gaston Chapman. First time we've called his name tonight. Nice possession, though, for Tulsa. Broken play. Didn't give up on it. Good ball movement. And then it got to Sterling Gaston. Nice up and under to convert the interior bucket for Tulsa. Good vision there by Jariah Horn to read the play in an unsettled situation and quickly find Sterling Gaston Chapman for the up and under. Some you content to slow the pace a little bit, eat a little bit of clock. Ball tipped away briefly by Haywood, but Davis able to corral. Got to rock him to sleep into the lane. Tough shot, draws the foul, and Haywood can't believe it. Kendrick Davis so masterful with the basketball in his hands. Able to go back and forth and wait to get any sort of advantage to attack the rim. So Davis to the free throw line. Again, we haven't seen much in the way of Fouls called at all in this game, let alone free throws. SMU now seven for seven from the charity stripe. Davis with three of those seven free throws. And as a player, I feel like that benefits more of the Mustangs because to me, if you're going into someone's house and you're allowing them to play their offense and you're not forcing them to find counters or different ways to score, you're just feeding right into their offensive game plan. A team like Tulsa has to muck up the game in order to win this late into the season. All knocked away right into the waiting arms of the Golden Hurricane. Tim Dalger able to draw the foul at the 10. Can't finish, but he'll head to the free throw line for two. But Bart Lennox, Darren George, Courtney Green, our officiating crew tonight doing a nice job of calling a, you know, a clean game, an even game. And, just, and to your point, just letting them play. Yeah, it, it, it beco it's becoming a little bit more of a physical game down the stretch, but just want you to pay attention to how long Michael Weathers hung into the air to contest that shot. And even though he ended up with the foul, the fact that he tries to be that rim protector for the Mustangs and goes after all those shots 
uh, to me, on the interiors is something that the Mustangs can fall back on, knowing that they have him as the last line of defense. Only six foot three, but with his athleticism, he can be a rim protector. We've seen it on a couple occasions already tonight. I mean, he's only six foot three. Marcus Weathers, who plays the center, is six five, and so clearly the Weathers are are ones that play much bigger than what they're listed as far as height. Final five minutes here at Moody, lead down to 16. Tulsa trying to find a way to crawl back into this basketball game. We've seen them make some runs tonight. So it's not out of the realm of possibility, but SMU has done a nice job of keeping them at bay. Look underneath, knocked away from Marcus Weathers, and here comes Darian Jackson in transition. Horn had it stripped away, and he draws a foul. Michael Weathers with an ill-advised turnover on the offensive end, and that's been an issue that he's had throughout the season. He has a turnover percentage of 25%, so one out of every four offensive possessions, he's going to turn it over, and that's something once you get into tournament conference play and really tournament play, NCAA tournament play, you, you can't have those sort of mistakes. Horn makes the free throw. You saw the reaction from Tim Jankovic, SMU's head coach, to that foul call. Whether it was to the foul call or the foul itself, I'm not sure if he was mad at the official or if he was mad at Kendrick Davis for committing the foul. One way or another, he was none too pleased. And Tulsa now cuts it to 14 with four and a half to play. Tulsa trying to trap arguably the most difficult player in the American Conference to trap with the yeah, basketball in his hands, Kendrick Davis. And I feel like you almost have to run him off the ball, set a double team, and get it out of his hands, particularly down the stretch if you're trying to speed the game up a little bit. Davis draws another foul. SMU not yet in the bonus. One more foul, and they will be. But a sideline inbound here, keyed by Todorovic. Good sign for Stefan Todorovic. I mean, this is money minutes that he's in. Last four minutes of a, a crucial basketball game. And a, as I mentioned earlier, a guy that had, had sparse minutes these last couple games, or really last eight games, to get crunch time minutes is, is good for not only him, but good for the Mustangs down the stretch because you're finding another player that can get you productive minutes down the stretch. Kendrick Davis took a shot there in the lane. Drew the foul, he'll head to the free throw line once again. So now both teams in the bonus the rest of the way. Now in a shooting foul, of course, so two shots here for Davis. Tulsa on a little 6 1 spurt here to get back into the ball game, just a hair, but still 14 and now 15 after the free throw made by Davis. As we tick under four minutes to play here at Moody Coliseum in Dallas. Jackson looking underneath. Pritchard able to rip it away, gets it to Horn for the little six footer. And now on the defensive side is where Tulsa has to try to make some stop and not. Be content with trading buckets. They've inched a bit closer getting it down to 13, but they still need probably two more baskets to really even make it remotely close. And Marcus Weathers says, you can forget that. Throws it down and reestablishes a 15-point lead. Yeah, and it seems like for the Mustangs, whenever they need a big bucket or a big block, one of the Weathers twins comes up with a so, some sort of a signature pr play to put their imprint on this game. Pritchard answers back with the layup. Three minutes even to work with here for SMU and Tulsa. Final few games of the AAC Conference regular season. SMU at Houston on Sunday. Home to Cincy, home to Tulane before the NCAA tournament. As Davis gets to the hoop, lays it in, and the foul. Kendrick Davis had a slow start. He's finishing just fine. Look, if you need a big play, look up Weathers. Kendrick Davis to Marcus. Weathering the storm. Tulsa getting dunked on.
71-56 SMU in control as we wind down here at Moody Coliseum. And Kendrick Davis with a pretty finish here plus the foul. He's struggling today from the three-point line, but whenever he has a basketball in his hand and he's able to measure the defense, turn the corner, nobody is quicker to the rim than Kendrick Davis, able to facilitate buckets, but on that possession, able to orchestrate a bucket for himself. As you look at the four players in double figures and one inching towards it in Stefan Todorovic. And that's good balance. That's what you want to have down the stretch from your team. Sharing the wealth, getting multiple players involved. And that makes it that much harder to defend when you're coming up with the scouting report. Who are you going to stop? Back the other way comes Tulsa. The finish there for Sterling Gaston Chapman. Second time we've called his name tonight late in this basketball game. But I mean, it, it just illustrates the difficulty of dealing with a player like Kendrick Davis, who for the first, certainly for the first half of this basketball game, and I think a little bit more than just the first half of the basketball game, we were talking about how he was struggling from the field, how he hadn't really gotten on track offensively. And now here you look up at late, late in the ball game, and he's leading SMU in points with 15 on the night because he just finds a way to find points however he needs to on any given night. And, and let's not forget that he's still facilitating for his team with seven assists. So he still is orchestrating points for other players in the team, setting them up, setting the table for his team. And that's what you want from your point guard. Dorovic thought about the three, short, short, moves short. inside for the shorter one, gets his own offensive rebound, kicks it back up top for Weathers, and SMU will eat a little more clock with a fresh 20. That might have been the first time Dorovic was inside the three-point line. This, <laughs> he was like, what is this feeling? Where am I? <laughs> exactly. He was lost. Davis with three on the ticker has to come up with something. Fires and rattles out. Michael Weathers, though, with the offensive board. Another quick 20 on the board. And SMU again with a chance to eat some clock. Second chance scoring opportunities deflate you as an opposition, but when you're the team getting those extra opportunities offensively, huge boost for your team and a confidence builder. Davis draws yet another foul and he'll head to the free throw line again. And Frank Haith told us earlier this week, he said he feels like his team has been really good with their first shot defense. He said we need to be better on the defensive glass and not allow the second shots because he said that's where they've struggled more. In this circumstance, they gave up three different opportunities to get to the hoop, ultimately leading to the Davis free throw attempts. Yeah, I mean, you're only as good as your defense until you get that defensive rebound. So you could be the best defensive team in the country for that first shot defense, but unless you're able to get that defensive rebound, it doesn't mean anything. And I think that's what Coach Hay illustrated to us when we talked to him is the fact that it was difficult this season to get his team to buy in defensively because he had some guys that were probably more offensive minded and it took a little bit longer for them to turn that quarter defensively, something that they have done of late. But still in conference play, you have to have that strict defensive mindset. Final 80 seconds here at Moody, spinning through the lane was Dalger. Draws the foul. Well, 10 on 10 crime. Zach Nuttall called for the whistle. A one and one here for Dalger. So now up ahead for Tulsa. On the road for East Carolina. Back home for Wichita State and UCF before the AAC tournament. And as I mentioned a couple minutes ago, at Houston for SMU this weekend, certainly the big one and then home to Cincinnati and Tulane before the conference tourney. SMU, again, continuing to show where they can ultimately be as a potential tournament team. Yeah, this is a team that could give people fits in the tournament because of the fact that they are so good from the three-point line as well as a good defensive team. I mean, you look at them in their adjusted offensive efficiency, their top 51 and their top 70 and their adjusted defensive efficiency. And normally when you have teams like that, top 50 is an offensive around the 60, 70 mark defensively. Those teams could make some noise in the tournament. USA Today had an article out today calling SMU the most dangerous team on the NCAA tournament bubble. 
They had six different teams listed. They had SMU as the most dangerous bubble team if they make the tournament. So they can really make some noise. That's high praise. SMU eventually coming up with the loose ball there as Marcus Weathers hit the deck. Bandamel helping him up. Got to give the SMU crowd some props. I mean, they fought through an ice storm to come out there and support their team. Tulsa's team, because that would have been unfortunate to mar this game with an altercation. But again, well, you, you got to be free throw. You got to be smarter, though, if you're Kendrick Davis. You can't jump into a situation like that and try to initiate a confrontation. You're too important for for your basketball team. It was a sleepy finish. Not quite as much anymore. That 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 moment threw a little jolt of life into this Moody Coliseum crowd. Yes, it did. Kendrick Davis, it appears, will hang there on the bench for these final 16 and a half seconds. Same can be said for Michael Weathers. It will be SMU ball on the baseline for these final few seconds. A little bit of a timeout for Kendrick Davis, one to cool, cool his heads off. But again, a hard fought win by the Mustangs. You don't want to mar their victory and the way that they played throughout this game. I love the fight from, from Tulsa. Coach Frank Hape has something to build on, not only this season, but for the season to come. But as we